Hi there guys and welcome back to the channel Held Dominance, this is Anthony and thank you very much for tuning in. Please like and subscribe and also click that notification bell if you're enjoying what you're seeing and want to hear more. So we start this video today as there has been a release by the International Rugby League Board uh, as they have approved the recommended changes to the international laws of the game as proposed by the Law Advisory Group. The group, which is chaired by International Rugby League match officials manager Stuart Cummings, includes members of the uh, from the Australian Rugby League Commission, the Rugby Football League, Asia Pacific Rugby League, and European Rugby League. LAG, the Law Advisory Group, has been working to harmonise the laws for competitions around the world, which has included a full examination of different laws, interpretations, and terminology. The laws which, are, according to the statement uh, that they've put out, the laws which have now been agreed and approved for adoption will include the following changes. The first one that they mention is a, is a rule that I have a big problem with. Um, it's the 2040 kick. What that means is a kick, a ball kicked in general play inside the 20 meter area into touch inside the opponent's 40 meter area which will result in a restart for the kicking team. If you're in that position and it, it basically means you're penalising the, the defence for that rule. The defence have worked hard and champion it all the way through that the defence force back the teams into their own basically in goal area closer and closer so that they can get a drop out to get the ball back it's another kick that are letting the defensive team gain a benefit uh, sorry an attacking team gain benefit even though there's great defense they already did that rule once with the dropouts if it goes out of play they lose the ball they get the ball back sorry the dropout team it's not good the dropout one is not so bad as it sometimes can be beneficial to um, catch out defenses uh, mentally if it's a 2040 it can happen at any time and it's not the defenses fault they're being penalized for something that they have worked hard to achieve. It doesn't make any sense to me, but it's going to be in the Rugby World Cup. Hopefully that will change if there's too many kicks like that. Uh, not many have done in the NRL, but I think that's more to do with, um, no, we're not going to do that. It's not fair on defensive teams. If we had it against us, we'd, we'd complain as well. So it's a bit of a rule change uh, with regards to the ball steal. A penalty will be awarded when more than two players are involved in the tackle and the ball is stolen. However, if the ball carrier is attempted to ground the ball to score a try, the ball steal is permitted. So it's helping defences out a little bit in that front. Um, Usually it was awarded like a penalty or a penalty try, but now with a ball steal is done in the act of scoring, it's permitted. So, lateral positions of scrums is next. The team with the loose head and the feed may choose to set up a scrum in field 10 meters, 20 meters, or the center of field from the original infringement. So in that means if there's a knockout, knock on, in the field of play and the scrum is awarded um, from either side of the pitch it can be moved in 10 meters 20 meters or the center of the pitch depending on where the defensive uh, the the scrum winning team decides that it could be done it's usually moved into the center so the scrum is done in the center so it's it's, it's not a rule that makes too much it too much issue but I think it may change, um, say, on a if a team's down to, down a player, 
i.e. sim bins or sending up, they might go on the 20 or the 10 so that they can create the overlap. Um, ball into touch. Again, if the ball is carried up, this time when the ball is carried um, or the ball itself goes into the touch, say a player is carrying the ball and has been tackled into touch or the kick has gone into touch directly. Not, not directly, um, one bounce and then gone out. Um, the opponent will restart the, uh, with a play the ball, either at 10, 20 or centre, again, like the scrums, in line with the point of entry to the into touch. Apologies, at this moment in time, uh, Sid, uh, South Sydney uh, Rabbit Holes have gone over for a, a try, making it 18 16 uh, against Canberra Raiders after Canberra were 16 14 up at half time. So we'll carry on with, the, with the, the rules. An infringement at the play of the ball. Where defenders de deliberately infringe to slow down the play of the ball, the tackle count will be reset to zero been going on uh, throughout the league and so that's expected it's a rule that I do like on that front it stops everyone illegal play the ball in the case of illegal play the balls um, the player the ball will be handed over to the opponents who will restart with the play the ball so if they mess up at the play the ball it's no longer a penalty it's a handover give the ball to the opponents Players breaking early from the scrum. In the event of a player breaking early from the scrum, a full penalty is awarded. The non-offending team can choose to reset the scrum if they like. So they've got a choice, penalty or new scrum. If the referee deems that both teams have made infringements at the same time, play will restart from the previous play of the ball. So that's what they call it, a mutual infringement. So if they both commit a foul, like holding down, rip the ball out, it happens at the same time. Goes back to the previous play of the ball, and then restart from there. In addition to approval of the international laws of the game, the board has also approved several specific conditions of play which will apply at the Rugby League World Cup 2021. These are the restart clock. The restart clock will be set up for the set for scrums and dropouts. Plays will restart within 30, 30 seconds of the award of the scrum and 25 seconds for a dropout. That's the speed up play. It'll stop players throwing the ball into the stands behind them if they've knocked the ball out for a dropout. Or um, waiting for a prop forward to catch up with the play because he's tired. This gives up 30 seconds for the scrub to reset and 25 for the dropout to make the game faster. And it's been a rule for the last couple of years in both um, continents of rugby league. And it has made a marked improvement. I think the last count was 79.9% of all the games were played in uh, was played quick well in the field of play but for the 80 minutes 79% of the 80 minutes was game playing time whether it's scoring standard play goal kicks penalties um, time off the clock will stop for all stoppages in the final five minutes of the game and after one minute and 20 seconds of a conversion and penalty attempted and not completed. So conversions are going to get a stop so they got to get 80 seconds um, with the clock. If it's not completed in 80 seconds the clock will stop so that the game time will be in play game time. So that's a good way. Uh, instead of continuous clock um, which benefits the, the scoring team whether they're behind or forward or in front it will stop anyway 
time spots after a goal kick. Um, the clock will automatically stop for 30 seconds after attempts at, uh, at goal. The play will restart when the clock reaches zero. So, if the kick, it, when it's attempting a, a conversion, um, as soon as that has been completed, whether it's missed or scored, the clock will stop for 30 seconds, and then the kickoff will commence when it reaches zero to start the game up again. Simple. Captain's challenge. Each team will have one opportunity for the captain to challenge the referee's decision. If they if they are successful, they retain their challenge. So we've seen that in the NRL when they've been challenging decisions, um, whether they've been successful or unsuccessful, which go up to the video referee to review it, and then they can say yes, no, continue, so on and so forth. It's to back up the referee or sort out a mistake that is perceived by the teams. There is some negatives and some positives about this. One, can't take too long. It's a video referee for goodness sake. It's going to look at it in all different angles and if it's not conclusive, they will keep trying until they've got a conclusive action. I think they have a certain time limit, uh, but there's no mention of it in here. Um, but that's what the video referees, they have um, X amount of time to conclude whether it is conclusive or not. If it's not conclusive enough, then the referee's decision should stand. That's how it is at the moment. But they should have a time limit on it, like they do on the players. It keeps the game pushing forward. And that's all the rule changes. On that, Stu and Cummings commented upon these. Um, this has been a long and complicated process, but we have an excellent outcome, and now the international laws can be applied uniformly. I would like to thank all members of the LAG and uh, the many other contributors who work co collaboratively to reach this outcome. So tell me what your thoughts are on all the rules. I'll be happy to know that. Um, put them in the comments below. Um, I have had my two pennies on each one, and uh, hopefully my explanations are, have been clear for you guys. Um, and that's it for another video. Please remember to like and subscribe, uh, because you'll be entered into the race to 100, where 10 people, 10, 10, 10, will get um, our t-shirts. But in the meantime, thank you very much again. Share and tell your friends about the channel. The faster we get to 100, the faster you get to the, those t-shirts. Anyway, thank you very much. I'll keep saying that because I'm very, very appreciative of you. And I'll see you in the next one.